Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And this is our beloved coffee maker that has joined our keto family and is the third crazy keto. She always said that nothing would come between us, and this is what I've got now. Except for coffee. This is our beloved new addition to our family. I've named him Mr. Darcy. Well, we're going to talk more about Mr. Darcy right, right after, after this. this. So if you're new to our channel, welcome. Like I said, my name is Joe. And I'm Rachel. And we're two crazy ketos. Well, we're three crazy ketos now. Well, now we're three crazy ketos. Well, here on three crazy ketos, we do different things like recipe videos. We do product reviews, usually of products like food. Uh, we talk about various keto topics. And then once a week, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we also have a website, which is 2crazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And if you are subscribed, don't forget to hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. So let's talk about this coffee machine. Yes, let's. <laughs> so for years, we used a Keurig machine. Mm -hmm. And we actually started with a Keurig machine to try to save money. Yeah, because my Dunkin' Donuts budget was like off the rails. Yeah. And over the years, I think you started drinking more and more black coffee. And so you wanted more of it because you really liked the flavor of it. I did. And I had worked myself up to like, instead of a travel mug requiring one K-cup, it would be like two K-cups. Well, now we're paying double for a cup of coffee. Plus they've like, I mean, the caffeine isn't nearly as high as when you have a fresh brewed cup of coffee. And some yeah. of those, they actually have carbs in them when they have the flavors and stuff. Yeah, I have kind of like long been suspicious of that, especially when you get into some of like the fancy flavors. Mm -hmm. I I've wondered like, is this just beans or am I getting some other like things to, even just to make things shelf stable. Right. And then you add in like the environmental impact of all the plastic pods. But the other thing for us was we decided to get rid of the Keurig because, you know, we're trying to get more and more away from plastic products, like yeah. buying plastic bottled water, especially here in Florida, where like I would have a bad habit of like leaving my bottled water in the car, like in the middle of the summer and then drinking it later on or yeah. the next day or like keeping a case. And I did that so, too. Yep. So we're trying to get more than plastic out. And you think about a Keurig machine and what are you doing? You're taking hot water and putting it through plastic. Yeah. So we were on the look for a new coffee machine and we really were looking at the Ninja coffee bar until we found this one. Yeah. Cause we, and we had some real specific things in mind. We knew it needed to be so easy that even Rachel can make it. So I know that you're going to think, well, what are you talking about? But you know, Rachel knew how to use the Keurig. That's why she liked it. But for anybody, I think it can be like, kind of a daunting task of how much coffee do I use? How many scoops to get it just right? Oh you know? my goodness. And some of them have like all kinds of little apparatus on it. Like, you know, they're, they've got like foamers and frothers. And... Yeah, we just wanted something basic. Yeah, just so basic. We're, we're a step above basic. So what we like about this particular coffee maker, and we didn't, we, I didn't know how to do a full review of it. So yeah. basically what this one is, it's made by Brubble and it allows you to put up here on the top, you can actually take this out at any time you just put your coffee beans in this just like this and then what happens is you're gonna put it on here then you have to lock this back in place and when you go to brew your cup of coffee it's going to fresh grind the beans let me right tell you into the machine the smell in the house since we've gotten this coffee maker is is like amazing it's a, it's like the best part of waking up like it you know you always would see those like Folgers or Maxwell House commercials and you're like I want to oh smell. I know right I want to smell what's going on in there and like I feel like we're finally living that yeah commercial. It is, it's a really distinct smell if you love the smell of coffee I mean I first you get it just from the fresh grind and then you get the brew it's my scratch and sniff sticker of choice so what happens is, is that you, you open this thing up right here and when it grinds it, it drops it right down into this cup here. Now we use paper filters, yeah. uh, but it does come with the gold tone filter. But it's so much easier to just throw away the paper Yeah, stuff. the paper is much easier to not throw. I'm trying to do this looking through the machine. It's like riding backwards. Yeah. 
So um, the paper is just easier for cleanup, and it does give it better flavor. It does, but and here's another thing: sometimes you get these coffee makers, and it's like, oh yeah, you use a p paper filter, but it's the only the the kind we sell. Right. So then you have to be paying twenty five cents a filter to use your own coffee maker. Right. So this is like we can just use the cheapo filters if you want. Right. So then it has um, it has a thermal mug. So there's no hot plate on this thing. This thing's a game changer. It fills changer. up into this into this thermal craft. And I'll say this. Hot. Like we have brewed coffee at 5 a.m. and come home at noon and it was still like 165, 170 I can't degrees. even tell you how much I love that. Because I would always get we you know, growing up, we had the glass one and I would use that. It would be great. And even if but even if it kept it hot, which this thing keeps it way hotter than a glass one. Right. It was like still cooking your coffee. Right, because they so have the, like the burner on the bottom. They have the warmer on the bottom, so it keeps cooking your coffee. But what happens is, is so because this is never heating up your coffee after you brew it, if you have leftover, it makes like the best iced coffee. It is the best Because it best never changes taste from being sitting there all day like that. I absolutely just pour it into like a mason jar and like I'm putting it in the fridge and it is more delicious than the ones that I've purchased um, from Publix, like the the cold brew. I want right. to say it's like, it's, it's not Stoka, but it's something that's like with an Yeah, S. I know which one you're talking about. But it was, it, and it was delicious, but this one makes even better iced coffee. So, yeah. Super fresh. So, what we liked about this particular unit, um, and it's going to be hard to do this without being out of the shot, but up here you have some controls. And here's where you add your water right here. And what happens is it actually will let you know I've got enough water. It's got like this little red thing over here. It's like here a bobber. That pops up when it's full. Yeah, I know you can't see it on the camera. I love the fact that you don't, I mean, the one thing that was kind of a pain about like when you'd have to refill a Keurig, if you weren't just like pouring bottled water yeah, into it. Yeah, you had to take the whole thing You had off. to take the whole thing apart. I like that this is just. Some people like that, some people don't. An so. open well. Um, so then what happens is, is over here you have some buttons and on this one here, you're gonna you can actually tell it. If we have to turn it on, you can tell it like how big of it, how much you want. So like if you have your craft in here, you can say I want to make four cups, six cups, eight cups. It actually goes up by one, all the way up to twelve cups, and it, it starts down at two. So you can start with just two cups. The only thing is that a cup is considered five ounces. So and if you want to feel land? like a travel mug. You would have to use at least four. You would have to set this to four because that's going to give you twenty ounces. But again, I like there's like three buttons, not like fifty options. Like we'll do your taxes. Like right. you know what's what's going on. Like what are your likes and dislikes. Like I just want it to be simple. Mm -hmm. So now the other thing, and this is the reason I chose this one over for Rachel because like I, we usually put it on ten. Then you actually dial in your strength. So you can, if you want it like just a regular cup of coffee, kind of like going to Dunkin' Donuts or yeah. something like that, you're going to set it on like somewhere between three or four, depending on what your flavor is. I usually put it on three. And then in the morning, I depending on what Rachel is in the mood for, like I'll put it up to like four or five, but it goes like from one all the way up to eight. I can't even imagine what an eight would be like, like blow your face off, I guess. <laughs> Because it's pretty strong even at four. Yeah. Now what will happen is once you go to brew your cup of coffee, whatever strength you put on there, it's going to grind enough beans for the amount of cups that you told it that you're brewing. How brilliant. And then, and then based on the strength. So like if I want it on, if I want to say like a mild cup like and put it on a two or a three and say 10 ounces, it'll, it'll grind up like an X amount of beans. But then if Rachel wants it at a five, it's going to put more beans into the machine. I feel like a two would just be like, like, like a couple of beans going swimming in a pool. I don't know. We haven't tried that. We should actually just brew one like that and try it. Ew, no. Don't waste the beans. So then the other option that you have if you don't want to do like a craft, and this is the whole reason we got this machine, is I can just press on this button, pull this out, and then Rachel can put her mug in here, and you can go all the way from eight an eight-ounce serving all the way up to a 20 ounce cup. Now, if you have a travel mug, you can just take this off and take this little bottom out and you can put a travel mug in here. I think it's seven inches clearance. Unfortunately, none of our travel mugs are only seven inches because Rachel has like 24 and 30 ounce travel mugs. I may be traveling a long ways and I need a lot of coffee. So yeah, so you could brew between two and 20 ounces or between eight and 20 ounces of just an individual cup. So we're gonna just brew Rachel's cup so this is like an eight ounce cup. We figure eight to 10 ounces. And all yeah. we do is hit the start button. Oh, I love that smell. 
And so it's now it's ground all the beans. It's put them down here in the basket. And what it's going to do is up here on the front that you can't really see, there's a little timer. It tells you how long it's going to take. I treat that thing like I used to treat a microwave. I'm just standing there watching it like count down for me. I don't know why I'm like, I'm mesmerized by it. Like it's almost here. It's almost here. 10, <laughs> nine, eight. Like, I don't know why I keep doing that, but I have been. Now here's the difference when you, between brewing a cup and brewing a craft. If you brew a craft, it's just like brewing normal. It's gonna drop all the, it's gonna put the water in and it's going to allow it to brew and drip out. Now, if you take it out early, um, the brewer will stop it'll like keep brewing oh. but you can pull it out to just pour a cup of coffee so if you want to like pause your brewing I cycle I didn't even know it that's did that that's what this little piece up here is for so it's got to be in there otherwise it won't like drop down oh my gosh I okay. love that so if you do it on a travel mug setting if, what, just by like having the ounces instead of telling you how many cups what it's going to do is it's completely brewing the coffee. Now you're going to see there's nothing coming out because what it's doing is it's steeping that hot water in the grounds for a minute or two. Oh my goodness. To infuse a better flavor. And you will definitely notice a difference between drinking it out of the craft and drinking it when it made it into the pot because wow. of the way it works. It's a little bit less acidic. Oh my goodness. That's awesome. Okay. So... Um, like you've got two and a half minutes to go in here. Once it gets to like the one minute mark, it actually will just pour the coffee into the cup. That is so cool. Okay, so now you hear it starting to go like that because now what it's doing is it's releasing the coffee down into the mug. That is so cool. So it gives you a little bit different flavor if you do it that way other than putting it in the pot. It's actually can be faster to do. If you want to do a travel mug, I found that it's faster to just brew four or five servings in the craft as opposed to putting like a 20 ounce mug in there and brewing it that way. Well, it was faster this way, but there's a difference in the taste between the two kinds of coffee. Plus my, my travel mug is about that size. <laughs> that smells so, so good. That smells so good. Now, you, now what it'll do is it's gonna you know do those final drips and then once it's done, it's going to beep. Now you can pull it out at any time. You just know that you're gonna have coffee dropping into the bottom a little bit. Well, let's see if it beeps. Like not quite, not quite yet. It actually has still the countdown on there. So there we go. Oh, I hear it. It's like a robot arm. So there he so, is. There your coffee is done now. That's the sound of happy. So. How long do you think it will take for Grayson to mimic the sound of all of this? Oh, I think he's already got it. Now, once you're done, all you have to do is just take this out. Oh my out, gosh, it's so good. Just go over to the garbage can because we're not using the reusable gold one. And you would just dump this and then rinse it out. I know we should be using the reusable gold one, but... So stinking easy. It doesn't have the same flavor. It's kind of muddy when you use the gold ones. Yeah. So now one thing I did want to mention is you don't have to use ground, the, the whole beans. Now with the whole bean, you're going to get a much better flavor because you're literally grinding those beans seconds beforehand. But we have like this cryo brew. But you can use pre-ground. So yeah. what you would do is open this up. You would put your coffee grounds in there. And then on this dial where you have strength, you actually just turn it all the way down and you turn it to pre-ground and now you have to measure it in though. So that's say, the difference. It's not gonna measure to... out how much you want. You have to like go look on the bag, like how many tablespoons do they recommend? Now we're back to Rachel so doing the math. You would just measure it in. Yeah. And so that's so I like but I do like the fact that we have that because we do have a bunch of ground coffee. I was stuff. gonna say I like having the option. Yeah. But really the advantage is grinding it ahead of time. And I am loving it. And the last thing I think to even say about this is it does have a time feature. So you can put a time on it and then you can set it up however you want with a time and it will automatically kick on in the morning. So I have it set for every day at five o'clock to brew a 10 ounce pot. Let me or tell not you. a 10 ounce pot, a 10 cup pot. Let me tell you, the first like day after we got this and I woke up and you're still asleep and I was going to take Caleb to school and I smelled freshly brewed coffee going on in our kitchen. I seriously almost woke you up with kisses because like I couldn't believe how awesome that was. So yes, I'm like thoroughly enjoying that. Yeah. The only thing is, is to do that. You have to remember to set it up because it doesn't remember this. It doesn't automatically do it every day. Oh. So you have what it's going to go by whatever your last setting was. So if you made a 24 ounce cup or a 20 ounce cup on at night, mm -hmm. it's going to then for that auto start, if you hit the auto start feature, you're going, it, it's going to brew that 20 ounce cup. So oh. at night you actually have to make sure it's full of water 
Make sure you have to have a fresh, you know, filter in there, mm-hmm. and then turn it to in the morning. I want ten ounces. That seems reasonable, though. Yeah. So, but it, because it's always going to go by the very last thing you did, but you still have to every night hit auto start. If you don't hit auto start, it won't start up in the morning. So here we get down to the the nitty gritty. How much did we pay for this? Um, it is a little bit more on the expensive side. I've seen it like in Bed Bath & Beyond and most of the stores, I think they all sell for $299. Okay. Unfortunately, Bed Bath & Beyond doesn't let you use the coupon, the 20% off coupon for it. It's like a Breville thing. Yeah, it's a Breville thing. Um, but they are, it was cheaper on Amazon. So on Amazon, it's $260. Yeah. So. And we're going to sell our Keurig machine. Yep. Probably. Yeah, because we have a commercial unit. So, uh, I told you I had a problem. So, you know, we'll probably get like a hundred bucks or something for it at least, I yeah. would think. And I, I have a lot of Breville units. I like Breville products and it has a two-year warranty on it. I've never had any of them break. And we have some that are like 10 years old. Yeah, it really feels like more restaurant quality. Yeah, they, they make a good brand. So, I know it's a little bit of a boring review, but a lot of people have asked. I mean, I would highly recommend this, especially if you just want something. I would say this is the next best thing to having a K cup as far as ease of use, especially because yeah. now, I mean, you, again, you don't even have to worry about grinds. Oh, by the way, you can also change the coarseness of your grind. So you can make it more of a fine, you can make it more ground, and you can even like go in and calibrate it to determine how much coffee you want ground for like whatever setting you have it on. Yeah, so I mean, it's it does a lot of cool things, but it reminds me of like the Kodak Easy Share. Yep. It's like they're making it very like very easy. easy. Literally, fill up the beans, tell it how big, how much coffee you want, and it does everything else. And I think that's the next best thing. Which was that was the big difference, aside from the grinding itself between this and the Ninja for us. Yeah. With the Ninja, Rachel was still going to have to scoop out her coffee, and again, so that means that every cup's not always the same. No, and that's like that frustrates me. Right. I want to like know every morning. If you make it, it's going to be different than. I make it because like what is my heaping teaspoon compared to your heaping teaspoon right exactly So this one really I mean aside from the fact that it's a great brand it's built really well you know you're getting fresh ground coffee it's just easier to use I don't know what every day brings but I can count on this coffee maker being consistent in the coffee that it makes for me like I like being able to count on something right right so uh, that is our video. I know it was a little bit different. Yeah. And I'm sorry, we didn't know exactly how to review a coffee makers, but a bunch of you guys asked for it. So. I guess we could eat it. So like I said, that's our video. If you like what you saw, do us a favor and hit the like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Okay, until next time. Bye. Bye.